Red Force is the tallest and fastest coaster in all of Europe. This is the signature attraction of Ferrari Land, which is the second gate of Port Aventura Resort. Because of its scale and similar layout, it is natural to compare this ride to the North American Strata coasters. So in this video, I will review Red Force and compare it to the other accelerator coasters out there. Ferrari Land was announced back in 2014. The park would open with just one coaster, but it would be a doozy. Red Force would reach heights of 367 feet, or 112 meters, taking the height record from a coaster next door in Shambhala. This new launch coaster would be 12 stories taller. It would also be the fastest coaster in all of Europe. The ride would again take a record from Port Aventura's original park. Furious Baca was previously the fastest operating coaster in Europe, reaching speeds of 84 miles per hour, or 135 kilometers per hour. Although there technically was one faster coaster in Europe's history in Nürburgring's Ring Racer, that coaster had a max speed of 99 miles per hour or 160 kilometers per hour. However, it infamously operated for just three days before closing due to maintenance and financial reasons. Red Force would blow past both these rides. Six coasters had previously broken the century mark for speed. Intamin designed five of them. Tower of Terror at Dreamworld in Australia and Superman at Six Flags Magic Mountain used the earliest LSM launches on the market to reach 100 miles per hour or 160 kilometers per hour. These two rides had their warts though. Not only were they super expensive, but they were difficult to maintain. Tower of Terror no longer operates, and Superman is often seen only going partly up the tower, meaning it's failing to reach its advertised speeds. Then you have Dodonpa at Fujiku Highland in Japan. Built by SNS, this coaster opened in 2001 with a pneumatic launch to reach speeds of 107 miles per hour or 172 kilometers per hour. When the ride was refurbished before the 2017 season, the launch speed was actually increased 5%, and you'd reach that speed in 15% less time. No ride on the planet accelerates faster than Dodonpa, and it's widely considered the most intense launch on the planet. Then you have the Intamin Accelerator coasters using hydraulic launches. Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point opened in 2003. The ride blasted riders to 120 miles per hour, or 190 kilometers per hour, and reached heights of 420 feet or 130 meters. The layout was simple, consisting of just a launch, a giant top hat, and a brake run. But it was a record breaker. Two years later, Six Flags Great Adventure opened King to Ka. This ride was very similar. It went just a little faster, a little higher, and added a giant camelback before the brake run. These two coasters are notoriously maintenance nightmares. Most of that can be traced back to the hydraulic launch. With all those moving parts, it is prone to sensor faults. And in some extreme cases, the launch cable has frayed, damaging trains and components. And it even has caused some injuries. Cedar Point has actually retired the original dragster experience, and they're heavily rumored to be switching the launch to LSMs. Formula Rosa at Ferrari World Abu Dhabi was the last hydraulic launch coaster Intamin built. This ride opened in 2010 and has a max speed of 149 miles per hour or 240 kilometers per hour. This one seems to be much more reliable, but it still can't match the reliability of the modern magnetic launch coasters. As LSM technology improved throughout the 2010s, this became the preferred launch mechanism for most manufacturers. This static, non-contact method is safer for riders and has more uptime for the parks. As a result, Intamin actually no longer appears to offer hydraulic launches on their website. This meant Red Force would become the fastest coaster in the world to use an LSM launch. While you wouldn't accelerate quite as fast as the Stratas, you could still reach impressive top speeds with enough time and cost. Top Thrill Dragster and King Dakar reached their top speeds in 4 seconds and 3.5 and seconds respectively. Red Force takes 5 seconds to reach a lower top speed. It also needs a longer launch track and lighter trains. On that last point, whereas Dragster and Ka can accommodate 18 to 20 riders per train, Red Force can only accommodate 12 riders per train. All these changes have made Red Force a reliable coaster from day one. I haven't seen this coaster go down for mechanical issues in my visits to Port Aventura, nor have I heard of it having any major issues. 
plus this coaster is more resilient to poor weather. Whereas the hydraulic launch coasters have to cease operation in the slightest of rain, Red Force can still run in light rains. It will stop running in heavier rains due to concerns about guest comfort. The one thing that can still cause issues though is high winds. Depending on the direction, it can make the coaster far more prone to rollbacks. Red Force opened with the park in 2017. It is easily Ferrari Land's most iconic ride. The massive top hat brandishing the Ferrari logo can be seen from anywhere within the resort. The track is blackish in color. The red comes from the trains, which are a blur when they whiz by. Red Force can also be heard from anywhere within the park. The launch sounds aggressive. It fittingly sounds like a Formula One car revving. Just take a listen. <laughs> These two factors make Red Force an absolute spectacle. The launch and top hat are on full display from the midway. Further, the park erected bleachers adjacent to the ride. The entrance is located by the top hat. You then have a long, and I mean long, queue line. There are switchbacks upon switchbacks. I dread to think how long this line would take if they were all full. It's no surprise this is the park's most popular ride. People sprint to it once the park opens. I've only visited this park on off-peak days, but I've heard it can get quite a line on busy days. I've heard it can reach one or two hours. But there are some ways to beat the crowds beyond just going on a quiet day. 1. Join the running of the bulls in the morning. The biggest benefits of this is that you knock out the ride early, and if you're the first person in line, you're rewarded with a front row ride. Since seating is first come, this is the only way to guarantee a front row ride. Two. Return in the late afternoon. It is no secret that Ferrari Land is not a full day park. It isn't priced like one. Most people start with Ferrari Land in the morning and hop to Port Aventura in the afternoon. This makes the park a relative ghost town in the afternoon. We were able to walk onto Red Force multiple times on a recent visit using this strategy. 3. Purchase Express Passes. I only advise to skip the line pass on super busy days. Express will get you on instantly but it's only good for one ride on Red Force, and you cannot get the front row with it. Red Force does have a single rider line, but you cannot access it until the final section of the queue. By that point, there's only 10 to 15 minutes left in the standby line. As a result, not too many people use it. It would be a lot more attractive and beneficial for accessible sooner in my opinion, much like the one in Shambhala. At the end of the queue, the employees admit just enough people into the station to fill the next train. As I previously mentioned, seating is first come, and most people will understandably rush to the front row. You can try asking to wait an extra cycle if it's already taken, but it has not worked in my visits. Now let's talk about the station setup. It is themed to look like a racing control center. It is stylized with all sorts of monitors. From a functional standpoint, you have separate load and unload platforms. This helps mightily with the dispatch times. As for your loose articles, you place them onto a cart on the load platform. Then after you complete your ride, that cart will be waiting for you at the unload platform. This method works pretty well. The trains are comprised of three cars. They are designed to look like Formula 1 cars, and they most certainly succeed in that regard. Each car has two rows of two. In all my visits, there have been two trains on the track. Now I think the front row is the best seat by far. It allows you to feel the full force of the launch. Those up front are required to wear safety goggles. These will not fit over prescription glasses, so just keep that in mind if you're as blind as a bat without them. If you can't get the very front, I would recommend the back car for the superior drop later in the ride. Riders are restrained by super comfortable overhead lap bars. I love these trains. You are so open. It's the same lap bar that can be found on Intamin's newer coasters. You don't have the elevated seating like Taran at Fantasia Land, or Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. Rather, the setup matches something like Conda at Wallaby Belgium, or Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, where your feet will be resting on the floor. Once secured, you get the green light and roll forwards. Without stopping, the LSM launch kicks in. This heightens the anticipation because there's no countdown. It just starts. This is similar to the old volcano the Blast Coaster at King's Dominion. Now, the initial kick is nothing compared to a hydraulic launch coaster. On those coasters, you are violently yanked from a standstill. 
it feels like your body is left behind. If that's the main reason you ride the accelerator coasters, you will be sorely disappointed by Red Force. However, the launch more than compensates by the end. The hydraulic launch coasters feel like they reach their max speed in an instant. Red Force is more about the buildup. You just keep gaining speed. By the midpoint, you feel plenty of power. You start accelerating noticeably faster. By that point, it feels like a proper accelerator coaster. The speed will force your cheeks back and plaster you to the seat. It is an absolute rush. While I prefer the oomph of the old hydraulic launches, Red Force is not as far behind as you may suspect because I can appreciate the way it builds up its speed. It feels like a souped up version of Magic Mountain Superman. Next is the giant top hat. You get blasted with strong positive G's at the base. Then you climb towards the sky. One of the most notable things about Top Thrill Dragster is the view of the peninsula and park at the top. Few rides can match that view. Red Force can though. You are looking out towards the Mediterranean Sea and the mountains. It is a view fit for a postcard. And if you want airtime, you are in luck. Red Force does this better than the North American Stratas. Those up front get great sustained floater over the top. It's not as forceful towards the back, but you still get good floater there. But don't worry, their time to shine is on the descent. Dragster and Ka feature a 270 degree spiral going down. This is excellent for lateral forces, but it sort of washes out the airtime. Red Force just features a 90 degree twist, similar to the one in the ascent. The resultant airtime is spectacular. You stay weakly levitated out of your seat on the whole drop up front. Then in the back, you get stronger sustained floater the entire way down. Plus, you also get nice laterals on the twist while hovering out of your seat. It is a breathtaking sensation. You then get blasted with positives and Red Force treats riders to an interesting finale. The original rendering showed a camelback similar to the one in King Ka, But we got something much different here. You start by hitting an initial set of brakes. Then they reprieve for an instant and you hop upwards into the final brake run. This surprising maneuver gives some decent floater airtime for all. It is far better airtime than the Camelback on Ka. It's a fun little finale. You then return to the station, ending the 2,890 foot or 880 meter long coaster. This ride is short, no one will argue that, but it'll satisfy the cravings of any speed demon. Now what about smoothness? Many people prefer Top Thrill Drags to over King to Ka for this reason. Red Force is very smooth overall. You will feel the train shuffle a bit towards the end of the launch, but it won't translate to any discomfort. It does not shuffle as much as the launch in King to Ka. So what would I rate Red Force? I would give this coaster a 9 out of 10. This is an excellent accelerator coaster. The LSM launch may start off slow, but it offers a satisfying buildup and exceptional top speed by the end. Then you have a wonderful top hat between the views and airtime. Then you have that final hump into the brakes. Sure it's short, but a few rides will leave you as amped up when you return to the station. This ride, plain and simple, is an adrenaline rush. And I honestly prefer to the North American Stratas. It's very close, but it comes down to preference. While I prefer the hydraulic launches, I think the top hand finale are what elevate this coaster above its brethren. So those are my thoughts on Red Force of Ferrari Land. What do you think about this coaster? Do you prefer this, Dragster, or Ka? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.